Consecrationism versus receptionism. This is one of those debates that uh, exists particularly and uniquely within one tradition, and that is the within the Lutheran tradition. Um, and this depends upon a Lutheran view of the sacrament of the altar, also known as Holy Communion or the Eucharist or the Lord's Supper, uh, depending on which of those names that, that you're familiar with, but they're all pretty common ones uh, used. So uh, the consecrationist versus receptionist position uh, depends upon an understanding of the words of Christ at the, the institution of the Lord's Supper, um, that when Jesus says, this is my body, he really does mean that the, the sacrament is Christ's true body. And in that sacrament, we receive his body and we receive his blood as well. Um, and all Lutheran theologians are agreed on this. This is one of the things that distinguished uh, Lutheranism from, from Calvinism was the denial of this idea that it is only faith that receives Christ's body and blood, uh, with the affirmation that Christ's body and blood are truly received uh, in the elements of, of bread and wine. Um, also here, there is a distinction between the Lutheran approach and that of, of the Roman Catholic tradition in which the notion of transubstantiation is, is explained. And from Lutheran theologians, this was seen as an over-explanation uh, of the sacred mystery of what's going on in, in the supper. Um, also, it was always the contention of Lutheran theologians that the bread and wine still remain present as well, based on the testimony of Paul in the book of 1 Corinthians, where there's a reference to uh, both the bread uh, and, and the wine. Now, the discussion here is over the nature of the timing of when Christ's body and blood are there in the sacrament. When, when is this now Christ's body? When is this now Christ's blood? And so basically two positions show up uh, pretty early on in Lutheranism. The first one is the consecrationist position, and this is pretty clearly that of Martin Luther as well as Martin Chemnitz and most of the earlier Lutheran um, theologians. And this consecrationist position says that at the moment of consecration, when the words of institution are spoken, as the, the pastor is holding the host and holding the, the wine and declares, this is my body, this is my blood, the words of Christ, uh, that they, they now are those things. This is now the body of Christ. This is now um, the, the blood of Christ. They are what, what he has proclaimed from that moment forward. And then the people in the congregation come and receive those gifts for the benefits of salvation. So that's the consecrationist position. But later on in Lutheranism, especially within the 17th century, in the scholastic era, uh, Lutheran theologians start to question that approach and move toward what is known as receptionism. Now, this view also confesses that the individuals receiving the supper really receive Christ's body, they really receive his blood. But it's stated that this occurs at the moment of reception by the individual rather than the timing of consecration. And the, the theological reasons for this are that the Lutheran Reformation always wanted to tie together the the gifts of the sacrament being the body and blood of Christ with the actual administration of the sacrament so that they're not separated in the way that they are uh, with things like Eucharistic adoration and other medieval practices that the Lutheran reformers fought against. Now, the theological argument for the consecrationist position uh, is simply that this is the most basic and obvious understanding of Jesus's words because Jesus holds it and says, this is my body. He doesn't say this will be my body when I give it to you. Um, and so according to the clearest nature of the words, the consecrationists will argue, this is the body of Christ, this is the blood of Christ at that moment through the word of God. Now, both of these positions have been held uh, throughout the history of Lutheranism. Within confessional Lutheran traditions today, those positions are both held. Um, but it does seem that within the 21st century, people started to shift back into the consecrationist approach. Well, I think the receptionist one was the most common, uh, probably from the 17th through the 19th century. There was something of a high church revival with people like Arthur Carl Peepcorn, um, drawing off of Wilhelm Leia, who, who lived earlier, uh, who are moving, who began to move toward a higher view of the sacrament that's acknowledged a more consecrationist view of what's going on in, in the supper. And so I think today, if you're going to speak with uh, Lutheran clergymen, many of them are going to hold to the consecrationist view. Um, but Lutheran denominations and synods uh, as a whole have not generally taken explicit stances on this particular question. So it remains a dividing line, a point of, of difference between Lutheran thinkers even today.
Thanks so much for watching. If you like this and want to see more, check out the other videos in this series. This is the Theology Video Encyclopedia, where we take uh, these various theological ideas and just try to give a very brief overview and kind of break them down to short little segments to give you an idea of what these discussions and debates are about. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. God bless.